Amazing people, bonjour! Welcome back on Today is a Good Day too. That is becoming for this year a special This Month is a Good Month too, Where every month I am taking you for an exclusive journey behind the scenes of my preparation towards Paris 2024 Olympic Games. I am so happy to be with you right now while you're listening to this episode. I don't know what you're doing in your day or in your evening, but thank you for tuning in and spending some time learning with me. And if you are new here, welcome on board. My name is Lucy Herman. I'm a field hockey goalkeeper playing for the senior women French national team and for the Dutch club called Den Bosch. Besides hockey, I'm also an inspiring high-performance coach, and that's why the purpose of this podcast especially this podcast format, which is sharing with you mindset tips and personal thoughts that I personally use when I'm facing difficult situations. And all I have is a desire to help you grow your mind, develop your mental strength and becoming the best version of yourself. Feel free to write down some notes on your phone or on a paper while listening, or you can also record some moments with your phone if you cannot write at the same time in order for you to go back to everything I said and everything you need easily. Every month I'm sharing with you three to four key questions related with events that happened to me or around me during the month prior. That's why it's called this month is a good month too. So if you enjoyed this episode or enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe and follow it on any platform you're listening your podcast to. And if you would like to let me know that you listened to the podcast, that you enjoyed, or if you have any questions about anything that I shared, you can also send me a personal message on my Instagram that is at Happy Lucy. I do read each of your texts and I always reply with the biggest pleasure. So please feel free to reach out to me. Now, just a quick reminder before we dive in. The several tips I'm going to share with you are not magic tricks to make you happy forever. They are not magic tricks that you, that will allow you to never be sad ever again or that like you will never struggle a day in your life or anything like that. That's really not what I'm preaching, simply because that's not possible. And the sole purpose of me sharing tips with you is to give you some mindset tools that you can practice So yes, indeed, mindset is a practice in order for you to navigate your daily life a bit better. That's it. That's all I want is to help you develop your physical and mental and emotional capacities, as well as to become more capable of overcoming your own challenges, to be more confident in your own skill, to be more capable of using your emotions instead of them using you. That's it. So it's like small tools to help you navigating through your daily life a bit better but i'm not yeah giving magic tools so you all your problems are fixed forever last but not least every piece of advice i'm going to share are not the only way to work on a situation they are one way like i'm not claiming that everything i'm saying is the only way this is not a three-hour mindset masterclass on one specific mindset theme this is a humble podcast episode now thank you for having listened to this long but important introduction and without further ado let's start this month is a good month to reflect over september In this month episode, we have not three, but four key questions that are. Question one, what's one first step we can use to bounce back from difficult situations? Topic two, how to go through challenges more peacefully? Topic three, how to get better at asking for what you want and putting yourself first? And topic number four, the key question of the day is how to overcome your fears with more ease. Let's start with topic one. So topic one, what's one first step to bounce back from difficult situations? One tip I have for you today about that first topic is the following. The first step to bounce back from a tough situation is to let it be here. Let it be here. Accept the fact that your current situation is difficult. And I know that this can be really challenging for a lot of people to accept that it's hard because we can think, okay, but who am I to complain about my situation when so many people have it worse than me? And thinking this way is completely normal, it's human. 
but it's called comparative suffering. You are comparing your suffering with other people's suffering. So if you think that way, be sure that I totally understand you. And please remember that it's not because other people have it worse than you that you don't deserve to have it better. And also you not allowing your situation to be difficult, regardless of your life condition, is not helping people to, to get their situations better neither. So nobody win either way if we are comparing our own suffering with other people. So that's the first step if you want to bounce back from a difficult situation a faster way. Accept the fact that it's tough. Mention it to yourself first that yes, it's hard. And no, n- like really no, you do not have to pretend that everything is okay all the time. Now, yes, of course, I'm going to give you some more example and context about what I'm saying here. But first, you might be wondering, okay, but how do we do that? How are we supposed to accept that our current situation is difficult? Except that crying about it. Well, that's one way first to cry about it, indeed. But the way to do that, to accept it, to let it be here, is related with our self-talk. That's really important. Your self-talk is going to be really important. So one self-talk example sounds like, okay, this is hard. I'm not really okay right now. I find this situation very challenging. And you know what? That's okay. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to accept that I don't have the energy right now or the answers right now. And I'm going to accept that it's a hard moment in my life. And that's okay. I'm going to accept that I'm tired. I don't have the energy. I don't feel like it. That's part of life too. I'm not going to think twice about it. And now let's go through it. I'm not going to think twice about it. This is very important. Do not think twice about it. So that's one way to do that. That's one way to practice let the situation being here. It's having this kind of self-talk of acceptance. And it's the same context that I often talk about on my Instagram page or also on my own past podcast episodes about dealing with our emotions, which is feel your feelings. Let the feeling be there. Be in your body. Accept it. Give it space. Do not pretend you're all fine. Don't try to force yourself to feel another way. Because by doing so, by accepting your feeling, by accepting it's tough, you're giving space to all that feelings happening in your body. So it is easier for your mind, for your body, to overcome everything faster. So now that we talked about how to accept it, which is related with your self-talk, let's talk about why should we accept that the situation we're going through is difficult. If you like to visualize things, here is one thing for you. Visualize a dam of water. Imagine the flow of water wanting to keep going, but the dam stops it. The water cannot go any further. The water is blocked, there is no progression, and in a way, the water is using its energy to force against the dam, but it's useless. It's it's energy that is being spent a useless way. Now, what happens if you free the water from the dam instead? What happens is, you can visualize it in your head right now, if you free the water, if you let it keep going instead of forcing against it, what happens is the flow keeps going naturally. It goes away, it keeps going. So now imagine again that the dam is your self-talk. It is your self-talk pretending that everything is fine. Or it's your self-talk forcing the situation to be something that it's not right now. And keep imagining the water, but imagine that it's you. It's you going through the situation. You are the water. And the more your self-talk that is related with the dam is forcing things, the harder it is for you to keep going forward. To keep moving on with energy, with ease, with flow. So like I said, it's the same with our emotion. The more you're pretending you're fine or that you're not hurt, or whatever, you're not angry, whatever, the more you're pressing against it, the less it is easy for you to truly feel better and to heal from the situation, to move on. Because we get to feel our feelings if we want to move on. So like, how are you supposed to stop feeling sad or resentful or angry if you don't allow your anger or your sadness to keep moving on? I hope that this image is helping you a bit to visualize even more and to understand even more why is it important to accept the situation and it's a tough one. Because if you accept it in your mind, like, okay, it's hard, you're allowing yourself, the energy in you to keep on going 
with the flow okay it's hard it's okay we like we're gonna figure it out but if you say no i have to do something different you're putting a dam on your water flow like you're forcing things you're you're blocking the situation so if you accept it you let it go and that's very important now that we talked about how and the why letting this difficult situation being present why it's important let's share a personal example of how I used that tip for myself during the past month. Because like I say, I'm sharing things that happened to me. So let's talk about that. I had a gym session mid-September that was mentally and physically just awful, really bad. And I don't often have this type of sessions, but it do happen once in a while. And it's important for me to mention that because I really want to keep it real with you that I actually had a hard time mentally while training. Because no, it's not because I'm good at giving mindset tips that everything is always like smooth and easy for me and I live in a perfect happy world. That would be really too easy. It does not work that way. Yes, I do have hard times as well. And I do like to share with you mental tips that I'm using for myself in order to help me go through them. Because if it helps me, I'm sure it can help you. Back to that training session. My body was really tired and there was an exercise that we had to do and for some reason I didn't want to do it at all. It was snatches, if you know it. So I go to the gym and I'm already grumpy. I don't want to train, yet I still do it because it's you versus you and no excuses. And there he comes at move (laughs) that I have to do and I really don't want to do. And what happened was halfway through my session, I just started crying. (laughs) Have you ever had these situations where like mentally it gets super hard and like back to the visualization exercise I just mentioned, instead of directly having a self-talk of acceptance and letting the situation being here, I first created a big dam of like of water in myself and I'm just telling myself, oh my God, I'm going to go home. I'm not doing this at all like fuck it and <laughs> screw it I'm going home I really don't want to do this I'm gonna quit I'm not gonna finish all my sets like I don't care it's too challenging it's too hard I don't want to go through it I'm done I'm out like I had the really proper big negative self-talk like no <laughs> no limit no like nothing just no it was no and when we are in a situation by ourselves, we have two options if either we give up or we keep going And I knew I wasn't going to quit because I knew if I would quit, then on my bike while cycling home, I would be feeling super disappointed toward myself. And I really did not want to have that feeling. I don't want to be someone who quits when things get hard because things are always hard in some way. So the other option was to keep going. And within that option, I still had two options. I could choose how I wanted my attitude to be. Either a good one or a bad one, because we always have a choice. And that's when I decided like, okay, you know what, just, okay, now you're crying, now you're really in a negative self-talk mood, it's okay, just sit on the bench for a minute, drink some water, take a breath, let it be. Let it be here, accept the situation, accept that it's hard, and that it is okay. And this is when my imaginary dam disappeared and my self-talk, my energy, my body, everything started to feel more peaceful, more calm. And I started telling myself, hey, it's okay. Take a breath. Take your time. It's really okay to be struggling right now. It's part of the journey. It's part of life. It's really a tough moment right now. I get it. It's okay. It happens. Let it be here. Accept it and keep going because you can do this. And from that, my energy level got better, my head got better, my motivation got better, I finished all my sets, I left the gym sessions, I was on my bike, and I was proud of me. Now, to give you a non-gym situation example, sometimes I have random days where I wake up, and I'm sure you can absolutely relate to this, and without a specific reason, I just don't feel super okay. I'm not super enthusiastic. I have low energy. I have a low desire to be social. And I'm sure that you can remember some of these days that you've had yourself in the past. And to be honest with you, like to be fully honest with you, in the past when I had one of these days, like I don't wake up and I feel like myself, which was in general like super happy already in the morning, I would overthink 
these days, like I would overthink this moment. I would be thinking, oh my God, there must be something wrong with me uh, because I've, I'm waking up and I don't have like high energy to go and dance and like shout and scream and I mean actually don't wake up and scream and <laughs> shout in the morning but more like sing and be like yeah let's go like so uh, so I was starting to freak out and overthink the situation way too much overthink my energy level and I would put an imaginary dam of water in my head and have a big negative self-talk and it was not help helping at all. So since more than two years now, I'm really working on having a self-acceptance self-talk, which is I just let my energy level being here and I'm just thinking, ah, I feel weird today. Well, I don't really know why, but well, that's okay. That's just the way my body's feeling today. That's okay. I don't have to be happy all the time or full of energy every day. All my feelings and energy level are important. So I'm going to accept it. I'm going to accept my current energy level feel my feelings and that's it and I must say doing that really helps it's the same if I'm tired before hockey training I keep on giving examples so you can find a way to re to relate to this situation in your own daily life so hopefully <laughs> you can like relate to it because I'm trying hard now but in the past if I was tired and I had a hockey training I would force myself to find energy I didn't have. So um, I would think, okay, find a music to listen to or find a motivational speech to listen to, to force your energy. Try to switch your mindset. Try, 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 force yourself. And I would be trying to force myself so hard that it was not helpful at all. And most of the time it only made it worse. And I noticed that same, I'm, I'm like, I've been trying to work on <laughs> improving my energy level and practicing accepting the situation. And the more I would simply accept that, hey, I'm tired, then that's it. And I'm not thinking twice about it. Well, the more, after like 30 or 45 minutes, energy I'm getting. And that really surprised me. But I noticed that the less I'm forcing myself to feel energetic when I don't feel energetic at all, the more I get energy. <laughs> so simply by not trying to force things and by simply letting things to be here, you can turn things around. Now, before moving to the second topic, I want to point out a preconceived idea that I think our society ha has, which is, it's not because we are working for a dream or a goal that we have, that we love, that we are loving every single day of the journey. It's very important for me to mention that in order to normalize it more and more and because accepting that a situation is difficult also goes with that fact that, hey, it's okay if you're not loving every day of the journey. It's okay if every day are not easy, even if you love what you're working for, even if you love your goals, like if it matters to you. So if you're listening to me right now and you sometimes feel that you're the only one having hard times, like enjoying working at something that you're loving, please know that you are not alone. I have them too. We all have them too. We're in this together. Thus, sunshines, please, next time that you're going through something difficult with a task that you have to do, let it be here. Even if it's just not having a good day, when you wake up, accept it. Let it be here. Welcome it. Don't force things. Don't think twice about it. That's very important. Don't think twice about it. Don't overthink it. Let it be there, because like the water, the only way out is through. Let's dive in topic number two. How to accept challenges more easily. One way about the how to do this is remember why you are in the situation in the first place. Remember why you are in the situation in the first place. Now, why this topic and why this tip? What is the purpose of this topic? The purpose is to help you becoming step-by-step step, a person who is able to handle hard better. And this concept of being able to handle hard better is something I heard in a speech from an American basketball coach, Cara Lawson from Duke University, who was saying in her speech that most people think life is going to get easier. Most people think school is going to get easier, basketball is going to get easier. And something I could personally say is, if I didn't have five gym sessions a week, 
my daily life would be easier. When the truth is, okay, in the first place, why am I doing five gym sessions a week with the national team? In the first place. Because I'm preparing for the Olympics. That's the reason why. Okay, so now the question becomes, in the first place, am I happy training for the Olympics? Yes or no? Yes, of course I am. Of course I am. It's my dream. So in a way, shall I be complaining that I'm having intense training week? Yes or no? No, of course not. Yes, it's hard, but because I'm remembering why I am in a hard situation in the first place, it allows me to handle hard better. So you can actually also use this tip with the topic number one. Back to what I was saying, <laughs> once the Olympics are going to be finished, something else is going to show up that it won't be easy to handle neither. Like now I can say, okay, this is hard and when this is the Olympics are finished, it's going to be easier. But then there's always the next new things. Like There's always a new level, a new challenge, a new hardship that shows up on our path. Thus, in order to accept these challenges more easily and keep pushing our limits and never give up and keep on trying to become the best version of ourselves and to invest truly in our life and give ourselves a chance, we get to build our mindset, a way to handle hard stuff better. And to start doing that by, as much as possible, remembering why you are and we are in a certain situation in the first place. Now, again, let's share with you what happened to me so that I'm sharing this topic with you today, in today's episode. For those who don't know, every week, Monday, Tuesday, I'm in France training with the whole French national team. And we're doing four gym sessions in two days. Yes, that's a lot. But yes, I remember why I'm doing this. So yes, I'm happy to <laughs> go through these heavy uh, days. Now, that one day, middle of September, we were almost done with our second session. And the last exercise we had to do was back extension. We had to do seven rounds of 15 reps with a low tempo. So four seconds going down, four seconds going up while holding 15 kilos, which with a low tempo and 15 reps is very heavy and very long. <laughs> so first I thought, okay, back extension, easy, I'm strong at that. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, it ended up not being easy at all because of that low tempo and the 15 reps. So then when I got to seven or eight reps, this is when my whole body was simply burning. And I still had like eight, seven reps to go. And that move became nothing but painful. Everything is burning and I'm closing my eyes to help me go through it all. Like I'm trying to sort of forget where I am and keep going through. And, you know, like you try to really push your limits. And then all of a sudden, so I'm dying <laughs> and I'm at rep like 12. And a thought came to my mind that says, that's your dream. That's your dream. My dream is the reason why my entire body is suffering right now. And me suffering right now is my dream because it's part of it. I was actually a bit shocked, to be honest, when I had that thought because I was like, oh, wow, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is my dream. And remembering the reason why I'm suffering right now in the first place totally switched my approach of that pain I was going through. And my mind became way more able to handle that hard situation. Almost as if my mind was thinking, yeah, okay, it's burning, it's hard, bring it. I don't care, let's freaking go. Yeah, that's my goal, that's my dream. The pain, I, I can handle it. It's something I'm feeling that is part of my journey towards my dream. So in a way, I'm happy to go through that painful state right now. Like, I would still feel the pain just to clarify that like yes um i was not by a magical uh, trick like not feeling the pain anymore no my body was still burning but because my mind knew he was aware of the reason why i'm going through this pain i wasn't fighting against the pain i was working with it and that is the whole difference and it allowed me to become able to handle hard better. To guide you a bit more so that you can find more ways to apply these mindset tips in your own life, even outside the gym, 
I'm going to share an example this time, not about me, but about one of my club teammates. So in that case, I was talking with a teammate who shared with me that sometimes it's hard for her to reach some expectations that some players have towards her at our club. And in our conversation, I reminded her what she had just told me before saying that, which is that playing at our club was a dream for her. And so now, yes, I totally understand that it can be hard sometimes. However, these hard moments are a consequence of her turning her dream into a reality. So in a way, these consequences that she was not aware of before she got to her dream are also part of what she wanted. Because they are consequences of her dream. So the same way all my trainings are consequences of working towards the Olympics. It's the same way, let's say, when you're in a relationship with someone, if you have a fight with your partner, putting the effort to communicate together over your emotions and being open and honest and vulnerable with your partner about what your needs are and how you felt about something that happened is a consequence of both of your desire in the first place to stay together, to make the relationship work. If you're aware of that, of what your desire is, it is going to give you that extra spark of energy and motivation and strength to do the work and handle hard better. So you can take the time now to ask yourself, hey, what's an area of my daily life that is currently hard or challenging for me that I wish would be a bit easier? It can be anything, small, big, it doesn't matter. And now... Think about the reason why you are in that challenging situation in the first place. Another reason why remembering why we're here in the first place is helpful is because it is so easy to forget the real meaning of a place we are at, simply because we are in it every day. It is so easy to forget how joyful and grateful you could feel at the beginning And why do we forget that? Why do we start taking the situation for granted? Well, because it's not an event anymore. It's our routine. That's it. For example, my weekly trainings are my routine. A competition is an event. So it's super easy to get excited for a tournament when it's once a year. And it can be way harder getting excited every day during my daily routine. Especially when... Times are hard, you're tired, it's raining outside and you're cold and your body is sore and winter is coming and it's dark like early. But that's exactly when it's the most important to use your mind, dig deep, find some energy, find some resources to help you to go through that hard time better. What is the situation you're going through right now that you've been complaining maybe a bit too much about or just a bit about and maybe you've been taking that situation for granted or like taking that environment you're in for granted because you've been complaining too much and you have forgotten how joyful you were in the first place to be in that environment. Now take the time and remember why you're there in the first place. Now, before going to tip three, I just want to share with you a speech I absolutely love. And the purpose of this audio extract is giving you more personal reflections and a different vision, hopefully, on what happens to you. Listen carefully. Here we go. Let me ask you something. If someone prays for patience, do you think God gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If they prayed for courage, does God give them courage, or does he give them opportunities to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does he give them opportunities to love each other? (laughs) Now let's dive into topic number three. How to get better at asking for what you want and putting yourself first. One way to get better at that is to start practicing where it feels safe. Why is practicing this important? Because 
it's going to allow you to feel more confident within yourself, to feel more in power, more in control. And it's also going to show you that you are able to stand up for yourself, but not in a, hey, I'm independent, I can do it without help, I can do it myself way, more in the, I know I need something and I can stand up for my needs and ask for it. So there's a huge difference here. It's not about being independent, it's about being confidently asking for help. (laughs) Let's continue with the reason why I'm talking about this theme. Last month, we were in training camp, and like every week, (laughs) actually like every month. Um, But so we were in training camp, and a teammate came to me and asked me if I could ask something very random to another teammate. And the reason why she asked me was because she was afraid of asking the other teammate directly. Now, I completely understand that it can be hard for whatever reasons to ask for information or for something that you need, that you're interested about or anything. It just can be hard to go to someone and ask for something. I'm someone who's, especially in the past, has always put everyone's need on top of mine which would lead me to struggle asking for what I wanted. I would be scared as well. So I 100% recognize myself in my teammate situation. And if I could find a way to fix a situation myself or without asking someone or disturbing anybody, I would do it myself. But now, especially since I'm with my girlfriend, being with her has tremendously helped me getting better at asking for something I want. Oh, I need because I know that she deeply wants to support and to be there for me. So I know expressing my needs to her is a safe space. So it's been a few months now that I've been practicing a lot asking for what I need in a, in a safe environment. Even if it's asking for me time because sometimes I'm just too tired and I just really want to be alone. In the past I could have been super nervous to ask for that because I would be scared of disappointing the person and upset her. And now I know because she understands and it feels safe with her because she wants to be there for me and support me, I can ask her that. And step by step, by practicing this with her, I've been seeing myself growing into someone who is more and more able to stand up for myself, for my voice, for my needs, and also in other environment. So if it was with my girlfriend first, then it's going to be with my family, or then it's going to be with my teammates and my coaches, etc. Or you can also go to strangers. So you can think about it for yourself now. How comfortable are you, this is the first question, to ask for something you need or you want? How comfortable are you to ask for something you need or you want? And who is someone you feel very safe with? Or who is someone you could practice that safely? Practice asking for your needs. Who is that person or that environment? Environment as in if it's your team, then you can think, okay, it's all my teammates or it's all my coworkers. It's my workspace. And if you want, if it feels even safer for you, Like if it's really challenging to ask for what you need, then another thing you can try is reach out to that person and let him or her or them know that you feel very safe with them. And thanks to that safety net they provide for you, you're going to use them as sort of an emotional training asking for my needs partner. (laughs) So this was tip number three. Get better at asking for what you want and what you need and put yourself first by starting to practice where it feels safe. Now, sunshine, let's dive into the fourth and last topic of this episode, which is how to get better at overcoming your fears. I'm going to share three ways about how to do that. And again, they are really not the three only ways that exist. That's the three ways. Understand them, learn from them, then act on them. That's the three ways. Understand them, learn from them, then act on them. A quote I have for you about this topic is, thinking has never conquered fears. Action does. Now, what happened this past month, again, so that I'm talking about fears? Well, as you know, I'm a goalkeeper. And very often, 
so now I'm really gonna <laughs> be super real with you and super honest. When girls are coming into a certain area close to me as a goalkeeper, it could scare me sometime. But this is like happening for years. And because I was hit very bad on my knee younger as a goalie, I always assumed I was scared of girls coming closer to me because I was scared of being hit badly again. I was scared of feeling pain, which is actually something I hate or hated because I'm not actually scared of being hit. I'm a goalkeeper. <laughs> It's the purpose of my position to be hit by balls. So why in the world am I scared of being hit by balls and feeling pain? When it happened, it's my job. So I really could not accept that that was the genuine reason why I could be scared. But still, actually, I don't even know why, now that I'm working on this podcast episode about this, I do not know why I didn't think twice about it and I didn't try to really understand. I really cannot understand why I didn't try to give that tips for myself better, <laughs> give that tips to myself sooner. Because I, re I wasn't trying to understand why I was afraid. What's the real reason? Until because there is a happy ending, <laughs> until a few weeks ago, yay! <laughs> so I started journaling about my hockey training since the beginning of this year, since September, I'm always journaling about my hockey trainings, and I sum up what went good, what could have been better, areas I want to get better at, and like thoughts I was having during the training, and journaling helped me realize that, hey, actually, Now I understand that when girls are coming closer to me and I know they're gonna hit me or they're gonna hit the, the ball, but the girls I'm training with can hit very fast, very strong balls. So I know it's, it's really hard to save the balls. Like the closer they come to me, the harder it gets because they shot very, they shoot very hard. So I realized I'm not afraid of the pain at all. I'm afraid of the possibilities of taking the goal. Which, of course, when you're a goalkeeper, it's a bit the main topic. <laughs> We take goals, so I shouldn't be bothered about it. But I was afraid of taking the goal because if it happens, it triggers my desire to get better as a goalkeeper. If I feel like I can't save the ball, I have the feeling that I can't reach my goal of becoming better. And thus, I feel like a failure. In a way, like it's a really short summary. And I realized, wow, okay, this is what I'm afraid about. Like I'm afraid of making mistakes. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to feel like I'm failing. I'm failing at my goals. So now, yeah, I get that you're thinking everyone has fears. It's normal to be afraid to make mistakes. This is what every top athlete have or anyone in the world have. Like we don't want to make mistakes. Practice makes improvements. So just keep on practicing. It's okay. Yeah, I know but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because I don't want to remain afraid. Goalkeeping is like my job. I don't get paid for it, but it's like my job. So I want to overcome that feeling. I want to learn from it and to grow. And I do not want to just let the fear be present because it's just normal to feel fear. Yes, it's normal to feel fear, but still let's find a way to overcome it. Now, of course, I'm going to share with you everything so you can do that with yourself as well. The first step to overcome my fear was to finally understand what am I truly afraid about. Stick with me, I'm going to give more context about after. The second step is learn from it. Now, what do I mean about learn from it? I mean, talk about it with someone who has knowledge or experience about the topic. In my case, I went to our mental coach that we have with the French national team and together we impacted it He explained me things, he shared me, he shared his visions with me, I shared my feelings and my thoughts, and it was a super helpful conversation because it allowed me to really get different perspectives over my fears, to get new insights, to have new reflections. Now, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a mental coach for you to go and talk to someone. I could have also go and talked with my goalkeeper teammate, for example. But what, what matter is, what I mean by learning from it is go and talk to someone who is qualified into the area you're struggling at. So for example, if you're afraid of public speaking, obviously you can go and ask someone in your environment whom you know feels comfortable talking in public. 
So you can think now about an area you are often scared about and think about, okay, who is a person I could go and ask for help to help me overcome my fear, or at least to learn from their vision, learn from their view, so maybe hopefully it can help me overcoming my fears. Now, if you don't have anybody in your environment, you can think about YouTube videos or podcasts or books or documentaries or anything online that is free to access or not free if you want to pay like pay for books. Um, but think of someone or something that is going to allow you to learn from, to have more insights. Then the third step that happened at hockey is to put them into action put them into practice. So what I did with me was I had a conversation with my mental coach and then I went to training. And basically that was more a mental switch that happened to me. And simply remembering his vision and his new insights and having talked about my fears deeply helped me. And I've been finally able to make good steps towards overcoming my fears of making mistakes. And I actually, I was really, in my training, I was like, hey, I'm doing good. Like, it's working. There's something that is changing. There's a shift happening in me. So that was only because I talked about it. I had new things. And then I just went to training, didn't think twice about it. And it was really going better. Now, one technique for you to help you understand a fear that you have and help you understand why you have it is actually asking yourself the question, why? <laughs> so it's very simple. So so right now, if you want to take some notes on a paper, on your phone, or record the podcast with like with your screen recording, feel free because it's going to be like coaching time. Think right now <laughs> of a fear you have and ask yourself, why? Why am I afraid of that? Yeah, think of a fear that actually you want to overcome. <laughs> That is more helpful. And think of why, why you are afraid of that. Now, eventually your first thought might be, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't take, I don't know for an answer. <laughs> I, I don't believe that you don't know. You're just not aware of it yet. So it's okay if you don't know, 100% okay. But really take a minute to think deeper. Really take the time to formulate thoughts and ideas or even write them all down and keep going from one thought to another thought. Why is that thought fearful or hard or challenging for you? What makes you afraid of that? Really like think about it now and then you keep going from that answer. Why are you afraid of that answer? And the same, why is that? If you want to like take the time to put it on a paper, you can, you know, go from, okay, one and then two and then three and put some arrows and stuff really to try to have a visual piece of paper of your fears. And then you try to keep digging until you found what seems like to be the true reasons of your fear. In my case of thinking I'm afraid of the pain, I actually should have, like I said, I should have tried that technique way earlier because if I think about, okay, why am I afraid of that pain when girls come close to me, I would have say it hurts, but actually I don't care that it hurts. So I'm not really afraid, but I'm still afraid. <laughs> so now what was my case? If it happens with you the same, you can ask yourself the new question, which is, okay, could it be something else? Could it be another thing I'm actually afraid of? Because if I would have asked myself that question, five years ago it would have saved me some time so now I'm saving you five years ago and you can use that trick for yourself now what is maybe something else that you're afraid of what could it be and then once you know what is the real root the real fear that you have you can ask yourself what is a perspective I can start thinking about and working on in order to help me overcome my fear a healthy and an efficient way. To give you one last personal example before the end of this episode and to help you to put into practice this mental work, mental coaching we're doing here. In the past, again, <laughs> I had that fear of pain feeling every time we had to do a running test with the national team. I would always be afraid to do running tests because I thought, wow, it's going to be so painful. And I was so afraid of that. 
And then I think it was, yeah, three, four years ago, three years ago, I asked myself, okay, why am I afraid of that? And my answer was, because I'm afraid if it's too painful, it's too burning in my body, I can't keep going. So, you know, back to the example I was saying again before, that's my answer. Okay, and now why am I afraid of that? Well, I'm afraid if I can't keep going and push my limits like I want, I won't reach a good enough number, I won't reach a number I'm proud of myself for. Okay, again, (laughs) a new thought. Now, why am I afraid of that thought? Well, I'm afraid that I'm going to disappoint myself. I'm afraid my expectations for the athletes I want to become won't be good, won't be what I want, won't be what I want them to be. Okay, there we are. That's my real fear. I'm afraid of running a test, not because they are painful, but I'm actually afraid I won't be able to reach a good enough number And then I'm afraid I'm going to feel disappointed toward myself and my efforts and my capacities. Okay. Now, there we are. This is what we're talking about. That's the real fear. And again, fair enough. That's normal. That's human. I'm an athlete. I want to do good. It's a normal fear. But now the question becomes, what's one perspective I can start working on in order to help me overcoming this fear I have, this real fear I have? which is not the fear of pain. My answer was three years ago and still is now, because I'm still working on that now, I'm still thinking of it now every time I have a test to do. Instead of being afraid that I'm not going to reach a good enough number, I can focus on being proud of the efforts I put in, being proud of the effort I gave. That's the only thing I can control, the effort I put in. Then regardless what's the number I'm reaching, regardless if I'm first or last, it does not matter anymore. I don't care. But how much can I push myself in that session so that at a time, with the energy level I have at that moment, I can finish my workout and be proud of me? This is what matters. That's what I'm aiming for. And since a few years, since I'm, I've did that work, actually the, what I said in the podcast about, okay, that's my thought and why, and that's my thought and why, this is really what I had with myself. That was really my self-talk three years ago. I was like, okay, think about it. Why are you afraid of the pain? Because I'm afraid I can't keep going. Why are we afraid of that? Because that, that was really me. <laughs> so it's really something I did and it really helped me. And now since few years, like I said, it's still my goal today. It's always the one thing I focus on all the time, be proud of the effort that you gave at the end. And that's also sometimes why I'm always trying to find tips and tools to help my mind to go through situations because I want to be proud of me at the end. I want to try. I want to do better. I don't want to just say, oh, it's hard and then I give up or whatever. No, I want to be proud of me at the end. And because sometimes my body is going to be more tired, the number I'm going to reach can change, and I won't break my record every time, and that's totally normal. But it can be a source of disappointment. If I fix myself a number and I don't reach that number, I'm going to be disappointed, or I can be disappointed, and thus I could fear that. Whereas if I'm fixing myself the goal to be proud of the effort I gave, and you, if you fix yourself to be proud of the effort you give, You can reach that goal if you're in the best shape or in the worst shape of your life. Because at the moment you're doing that workout or that exam or that speech or that game or that training or that conversation with your friend, whatever it is, if you know you gave your best effort, if you know you're proud of you and you gave what you had, then what do you want to give more? So that's it, champion. That's it for the fourth and last topic of this month's episode. Last but not least, here are the three final inner questions I'm going to share with you before ending this episode. So again, take some notes. Question one, what is an area you noticed you've got better at and what's one way you can keep getting better at it? Question two, what is something, anything, important for you that you would like to work on this upcoming month? And when I say to work on, it can obviously be something mental or emotional. It's not just practical task or to-do list. 
Now, third question, what is an area where you feel you've let yourself down a bit too much and you want to invest more effort into for the upcoming four weeks? That's it, champion. That's it for this second episode of this month. It's a good month too. Thank you so much for having spent this moment of your day with me. If you've enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe and hit the follow button on anywhere you're listening to your podcast so you won't miss any upcoming episodes as well. If you found this content I shared valuable, you can share it with a friend whom you think will benefit from learning about it as well. Because as you know, we get stronger together. Now, I wish you to have a great day. But if you can't have a great day, then that's okay. Just have a day. That's great too. Let it be here, whatever it is. And if you're listening to this in the evening, I hope you had a great day. But same, if it was just an okay day or just a day, that's great too. Now, please, 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 please take great care of you and of your mind because you matter. This is a reminder that there is nobody else like you in the world. So in case nobody told you today, thank you for being you. And thank you for making a difference in this world. You are amazing. Okay, bye now. Bisous. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. From up here The world seems small We can sit together